right, so here we are today. Um, got a lot of stuff going, as you can see, a few engines laying around, um, getting this rear end all done for the rot stain. Got a little bit of a cold, but we're working through that. So anyway, I got this engine from a uh, subscriber here in the local area, and um, anyway, he got it out of a parts truck, and we're, I'm not really sure about the condition. So we're going to tear into it and just take a look, kind of a mystery engine reveal. So it could be kind of dirty, looks kind of interesting, but got it for a good price, and I do need a few engines. So it looks like it sat for a long time. Didn't have a lot of the accessories, so I'm sure it was parked unrunning for a long time. Um, got most of the fuel injection off here, just down to the block, but some things I'm looking at here. Uh, definitely someone's been into the engine before. This is a um, non-factory intake gasket, and if we look back here, those are non-factory plugs. So we're going to get all this uh, kind of, I guess, vacuumed off. I don't really want to blow it around with the rear end open right there. So we'll vacuum all this off so it doesn't fall down the engine, and we'll get this intake and distributor and whatnot popped off and get a look at what we're dealing with. Distributor is loose, kind of, kind of tight in there. So you can see all the oil's varnished up. Probably sat a long time, but at least we cleaned up all that crap so it didn't fall in. And we're gonna put our uh, little distributor hold down back on so we don't lose it. So getting this intake loose here, I've noticed that a lot of these bolts are extremely loose to hold the intake on. So um, you know, could have had a pretty significant vacuum leak, or even if it was really bad, been leaking coolant into the oil. All right, got all the intake manifold bolts out, so we're getting ready to pop it off. I guess I missed that one there, but it's loose. Ironically here, this front one um, used a ratcheting wrench, so I can't really put it back in, you know, but um, when we pull the intake off, we'll get that back out. So not that big of a deal. So anyway, when you take a Ford intake off, they're all the same on the small blocks. You can usually get right under here on the water neck and pivot off of your uh, water pump. Just give her a little pop just like that. So um, I'm going to grab this thing and try and do my best to keep all the debris from falling in. And then we'll take a look inside. Well, we got the intake manifold off there, it just popped right off. So pretty easy, it wasn't stuck on, there isn't a bunch of gasket sealer. We can see where the oil was getting up um, into the intake runners, which I'm sure was causing an issue. Um, as I said before, the intake manifold bolts were barely holding it on. So as we suspected, someone had been into the engine, we can see some more of this uh, um, silicone stuff. But overall, it looks super clean. Um, looking down it, it's definitely a roller block. We can see the bosses here for the uh, the hold down for uh, the dog bones, and we can see these heightened lifter bores, which um, the roller uh, lifter is a little bit taller. It's basically just a normal flat tappet lifter with a roller grafted onto the bottom, so it's a lot longer. Naturally, your push rods for those engines will be um, in stock length shorter to account for that longer lifter. But anyway, um, looks good. Definitely a roller block. Uh, very reminiscent of my old, um, it was a roller block that I had in my Ford that was an ex-demo derby engine. But anyway, um, we'll get these valve covers off, get looking into it. So um, try and snap a picture here to see what the casting is on these cylinder heads. And then we'll go from there. So I never turned the engine over before I bought it, which was uh, pretty stupid. So I guess now's as good a time as ever. So I got my breaker bar on here, and we're just going to throw the engine over and um, see if she's not stuck. And then, um, you know, you can kind of tell by the resistance and what shape the engine is for compression. So let's turn in our crank here. A few spark plugs out there. There we go. Definitely got plenty of compression yet. It would run if it had to, so we'll get further into it and get a closer look. 
All right, got the valve covers off. Again, looking to be fairly clean. There's a little bit of gack there at the bottom, but um, you know, overall the block is still its uh, steel color, so looks pretty good. Some things I can note here already, and with how petrified this gasket is and having gasket sealer on it, um, someone was into it again, but with how hard this is, uh, it definitely goes with the story that sat for a long time. And, you know, it sat outside, and uh, it's, it really shows here on this side of the engine where the open breather um, would have been to the air. Uh, we can see that it started to accumulate some light rust on the top end here and on the head bolt. Um, not so much on the other side, but uh, anyway, that's kind of what you have happen when it stuff sits outside. So I'm hoping when we get down in here, one of the cylinders isn't all rusted up. Um, I've seen that happen before, but getting down here and looking, um, these umbrella seals are extremely pliable still. So... Uh, what that kind of tells me is, again, that someone's been into it. Those are not the factory umbrella seals, and if this was an original engine untouched, uh, those would be pretty much petrified by now from the 80s. So um, I guess we'll just tear into it further. All right, so getting down here and taking a look, you can see the head is slightly a different color than the block, showing that the heads have been worked over. They were probably boiled. That's kind of the color they look like when you get them back from boiling. As I mentioned, the engine was extremely clean inside. Um, poking around here and scraping some of the dirt off, um, I started looking around. Are you helping? I started looking around and I found this in one of the uh, freeze plugs. And normally I wouldn't think nothing of it, but my little Mabco engine sitting over in the corner had a little Mabco deal stuck in each freeze plug and so I looked on the other side and here's what I come up with so either this engine has been overhauled rebuilt something because I imagine that's what this is from I'm gonna try and look it up and see what I can find but again it looks like a quite an older rebuild you know the dirt build up is quite old but you can see that even on that uh, timing cover there's some gasket sealer so Anyway, um, again, we'll just keep tearing right into it. Another interesting thing to note here is someone took the time to go through and check all the spring pressures and add shims accordingly. So that's definitely not factory stuff again. Um, we can see that they went through and um, a lot of the valves are different. So they took their time and took good care. So um, again, definitely not a factory unit here. Finally decided it was a good time to drain the oil out of this engine before I started um, turning it upside down and it all started running out. So um, the top end looking pretty dry again, kind of consistent with the engine not being run in quite some time. And the oil looks like that as well. Uh, it's pretty much just like tar that's come out of that engine. It's taken a long time to uh, kind of go down in my catch can here. So again, some consistent stuff. So. I'm going to go ahead and look up where this engine originated from and who rebuilt it. Taking a, looky, <clears throat> taking a look here at this little engine tag. So it says Neb Mars Hall Engine. So anyway, I did some poking around. I kind of found on the internet that that's uh, Marshall Engines and that's in Nebraska. So that's kind of consistent with what I see on that tag. So, um, and then it had, I poked around a little more and found a little VIN code plate, but I'm sure it was so far in the past they might not have it on their records. I'll probably give them a call, but um, definitely at this point was a rebuilt engine, so that's pretty neat, I guess. All right, so now we're going to take All right, so now we're going to take a closer look at this guy here. So I got my um bore scope with me and we're going to look in the bores and see what we can see. And um, try and look under the heads and see what heads they are. You know, I can feel some numbers here, and that's generally where Ford uh, marks their heads is, <clears throat> unfortunately, on the underside. So I've already got all the spark plugs out here, and I've actually already taken a look-see on my own. So um, the main thing I was looking for here is if this engine in particular is original 
And um, why this is important to me is uh, Ford, when they make engines, they're uh, dynamically balanced. So they take the harmonic balancer, the flywheel, and all the crank and all that, and it's got a dynamic balance to it. So, um, you know, when you have an engine bored over, and if you don't ask them to balance your engine for you, you know, you have what's called a static balance. So it's not necessarily good for high RPM stuff. It kind of, um, you can get vibrations um, through your crankshaft and whatever, and it just wears your engine a lot quicker, and you can have even uh, catastrophic failure scenarios. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm checking in here to see if uh, the pistons appear to be original to this era of engine. So um, what I've done here, and we're just going to um, get a piston hole here that uh, is kind of a catch-all scenario for my explanation reasoning. So it's kind of hard to see here, but it's a uh, four-valve relief. And it's the smaller reliefs. So um, kind of with that, that's pretty in line with what they had in that era. So that's pretty weird to me in and of itself that, you know, it's kind of a remand engine. But it's either been re-rung or bored. Because if we look really close, you can see some cross-hatching on the cylinder bore. Um, another thing is when engines sit for all this time, kind of what you'll have happen is uh, the moisture, at least if you live in a humid state like I do, the moisture will work its way into the engine. You know, you're always going to have one intake valve open and moisture is going to get in there. So um, it was indeed uh, this chamber that had the open intake valve. Um, all the other ones look good, but it's definitely got... A significant amount of rust around the top but I um, should be able to scrape most of this out it all looks like surface rust not necessarily any pitting so that looks good overall um, naturally when an engine sits this long I'm gonna pull the heads off and put new head gaskets on it anyway so going into another cylinder here if we can get it clocked right you can kind of see that uh, um, the valve reliefs there, but again, looking over at the pistons, um, you know, there's definitely some very fresh cross hatching that's been rebuilt fairly recently. So, um, and looking up here, I don't see any piston ridge, but it looks like if you see there, there's almost two different levels where it might have been ridge reamed. So anyway, um, naturally got to pull the heads off and kind of determine what we're looking at here but overall um, as far as having around as a spare engine um, you know it's all right if we get down to the point where we have to use it which it's going to be the uh, rot stang backup engine you know we'll obviously um, pull it apart and try and just do a real quick overhaul and i forgot to show what heads these are if we see here, they're the E6 heads. So it reads E6AE. So again, that's consistent with truck heads. They're not really good for any performance stuff. And that's why, um, you know, not that E7 heads are a whole lot better, but they don't have the valve shrouding that these E6s do. You know, these are just made for, uh, you know, real low end torque below. Uh, 4,000 RPM. So pretty much um, I've had them in an engine before a stock engine that I had my F100 before the 289 was in there and it was pretty much all done after 4,000 RPM. Well, that's pretty much the end for this engine. I'll put it on a stand and we'll bag it up considering its condition. Um, luckily, I had another friend online here that goes to school up at Iowa State and he had recently rolled his Bronco so I got this unit from him for a very very good price and that's going to go ahead and go in the F100 which the original intent for this engine before I saw the condition was that it was the F100 engine but given the situation um, it's going to be the backup rot staying engine and I think it'll do just fine with that being a roller block we can throw a roller cam in it kind of clean it up and it'll do just fine.